the reasons that we decided to do this story in VR is because the place is actually very, very important to the story. <laughs> I grew up in the 80s and I learned as a child about famine through the famine in Ethiopia and I was taught that famine is caused by drought and that it just doesn't rain enough in Africa and it's very sad that people are starving but this is mother nature. One of the things I learned in covering this current crisis that South Sudan is going through is that it is not a natural disaster. It's entirely man-made. We thought about what is the best way to tell that story. What technology could we deploy that would serve the story? One of the best things about virtual reality is that it can actually transport you to another place that you otherwise couldn't or wouldn't go to. Because of the nature of shooting VR, like we, we're not there in front of the camera. Like we, we can't be around the camera, otherwise, you know, we're in the shot. So you just kind of set up this thing, you sort of convince everyone that it's not dangerous and that it's not gonna hurt anybody, and then you just go hide. We shot on two different rigs, both of which held GoPro 3 Pluses because they deal with the heat better. Their maximum frame rate for what we were able to do is 48 frames per second versus the GoPro 4s, which are 60 frames per second. So 60 FPS overheats the camera, and in South Sudan, it was like, I wasn't going to like risk it with the heat. You have to sync all the footage, so you have to like clap sync all the cameras together. First attempt at getting a boat. We had these two rigs. One was a Hero 360, this like blue rig with seven cameras, and then one was a Freedom 360, which was a six camera rig that had all the cameras in their casings, waterproof casing. You couldn't shoot with it underwater because of light refraction. It, you need to have like a specific camera configuration that will work underwater but I could get, you know, mud and like put it anywhere I could. VR is a very new medium right now. We don't really know what works and what doesn't work and we're just figuring that out as we go along. I had a computer in the field, so where we were actually able to like, like stitch things on the fly and test stuff. Software that we use is Autopano. It's a suite of two, it's two programs really, Autopano Video and Autopano Giga. They get you a lot of the way there. They're like heavy algorithmic programs. They're really good for like all the rough work that you have to do. Now in post-production, the process is actually a lot more complicated because you effectively have to go back and restitch all those videos section to section. You need a much more like refined tool to deal with some of the errors that you get between like, you know, objects that are passing between cameras, objects that are passing at different rates between cameras, color aberrations between different cameras. There's like a lot of weird things that happen when you're trying to like unify a bunch of different cameras that are like seeing the world in a different way at different angles. There are a few things that I thought that would work that actually didn't work and then some things that I thought were probably off the wall crazy and would be weird ended up working well. There are varying from three to four million people who are severely food insecure in UN terms, which means that they don't have enough to eat and they're going hungry. And there are about 30 to 40,000 of those people who are on the far end of the spectrum and they are close to death by starvation. It's a story that people are generally like not that terribly interested in. Virtual reality seemed like a way to direct attention, take you places that you otherwise wouldn't get to go. 
when we compose a shot in VR, there is some sort of primary action that's happening within a few feet of the camera. But there should also be things that are happening around that, maybe in the medium distance or in the far distance. And one of the things that we struggled with is how much information can we deliver without overwhelming people. There's a lot of things that like don't work in VR, but then there's like a lot of things that it's, it opens an opportunity for stories that we, I don't think we've thought of as being like stories yet. Like place as a story, like that's a pretty interesting idea that like I hadn't thought about until this year. Like, like the place is the story. Why in 2015 are millions of people hungry? And why would people be starving to death? 